everyone. So today I have installed iOS 17 and iPadOS 17 on my devices, my iPad Pro 11 inch first gen and my iPhone 14 Pro. So we all know the new features in iOS 17 like standby and contact posters, but today I'm going to go through some changes to the dynamic island and also live activities on both the iPad and the iPhone. So let's take a look at the iPhone first. So let's just bring this, zoom in a little bit. So now when timers are done, it actually shows up in the dynamic island instead of a regular notification. So if I just set a timer here, if we just go back to the home screen, you might be able to see what it does. And there it is. So that's a new little change in iOS 17. Let's just stop that. And now let's just set an alarm as well. So let's set it for exactly 2 p.m. in one minute. And it's almost time, so let's see what that does as well. So yeah, this is what it looks like. So you can snooze or you can dismiss the alarm. And if you just press on it, nothing happens. Let's get rid of that. And when the alarm has been snoozed, it looks like this. You get a little countdown in the dynamic island. And also, when you go to your notification center or your lock screen, it also counts down there. And you can just cancel it by tapping on the X. So those are some new additions to the Dynamic Island with the Clock app. But now let's take a look at the built-in Shazam feature, which is now integrated with live activities. So let's just move this iPhone out of the way. And let's bring in an iPhone with an older version of iOS to see what it looked like before. So there is an iPhone XS running an older version. So if I start Shazam, I'll play some music. And it just pops up as a regular notification as you can see. So let's take a look at that. So this is what Shazam notifications usually look like. So your result shows up here. You can do a little 3D touch or haptic touch on it. And then you can listen to it on Apple Music, or you can just tap it to open the Shazam app. So there it is. But now let's take a look at iOS 17 and the Dynamic Island. So, let's put the phone down here. And let's tap on Shazam. So as you can see, when it's listening, it pops up in the Dynamic Island, and also the result shows up there as well. And it looks like it actually stays up there because it's actually a live activity. So we can press and hold on that. And there's the result. You can also swipe it away. And if we go to the notification center, we can see that it is a live activity in which you can just tap on it and it'll open the Shazam app. You can listen to the song and all that. But how does it look on the older iPhones and on the iPad, which now has live activities? Well, let's take a look. So this is the iPad here. So let's tap on Shazam and let's play the song. There we go. So we get the same listening pop-up as on the iPhone 14 Pro. And if we take a look at the lock screen, you can see that it looks just like the iPhone. So now with iPadOS 17 and iOS 17, all devices get the same look with Shazam. And this new change also applies to AirDrop. And now let's take a look at what it looks like on iOS 17 or iPadOS 17. So now when it's sending over, you get a little pop-up. And when it's done, it'll say airdrop complete. And then you can just tap to open it up. So if we send the same file over to the iPhone, we still get that dynamic island pop-up. And when it's complete, it'll also remain in the dynamic island and is accessible from the lock screen. 
One last new live activity and pop-up is with voice memos. So if you swipe down to open Spotlight and type voice memos, you get a little shortcut to start recording. And if you tap on that, you get a nice little pop-up, which quickly disappears. And you can reveal it in your notification center or lock screen. So if I hold it there, you can tap it to stop recording and it will save it to voice memos. So these are some changes I have discovered so far testing out iOS 17 and iPadOS 17 developer beta 1. So far, they're both running very smoothly and quite stable on the iPad and on the iPhone. With the iPad Pro being from 2018, it's running quite well and without any lag or hiccups. And on the iPhone 14 Pro, battery life is pretty much the same as on iOS 16. And of course, since it is a developer beta 1, there are some bugs throughout the OS, but overall, they're both running quite well. And that's pretty much it. So if there are some new changes and features in the next few betas, then I will make some follow-up videos to that. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next video, and I'll see you later.